What's up guys, David here, and welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing the Premier League predictions, and I'm really excited to bring this to you, because I just find this interesting, like, predicting it, and then I'll probably look back on it, like, yeah, like at the end of the season, and just see, see how wrong I was. So obviously I'm going to be getting most of these wrong, I'm just predicting why I think they'll finish, I'm, I'm probably going to get them all wrong, really. So if you guys do disagree with me, let me know in the comments, just to put your 1 to 20 if you want. So drop a like if you do enjoy this video, and comment down below if you want to see me do more prediction videos, like the Champions League, Europa League and the like the Cups in England and just the European Leagues and that. So let's get straight on with the video. Also I am recording this on the 1st of August so I might get this completely wrong because maybe like uh, City could go out and sign an amazing player, United could finally sign Pogba and sign somebody else as well so I could get this completely wrong just, just, like, just with the transfers. In 20th I'm going to say Burnley. I just think they've not got enough quality in the side at the moment. They could maybe sign a few more players. They, well, they really do need to at the moment. I don't think they have enough quality as they've shown when they have been in the Premier League. I think they've been here twice before and they've gone. They've got relegated both times. I don't think they need to sign just a few more players just so they can stay in the league. At number 19, it's Hull. If Steve Bruce is still managing Hull, then I would probably predict them a bit higher up the league. It's just they've lost the man. They've lost the manager and he's done a great job there. So it's going to be really difficult for them. Obviously, Steve Bruce left because of the problems that he had with the owner. And uh, I'm not sure fans really will be too pleased about that. So it's going to be very difficult for Hull to stay up. But really, the, the next manager's got a big task on his hands. Obviously, Hull do have a few, a few players that have played in the Premier League before. But I don't think they have enough quality to stay in the league. And without a manager at the moment, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Number 18, I've got Sunderland. I just think because David Moyes is now taking over, I don't think he's going to do a great job, really. Some people may think, some people may disagree with that. But I don't think he's going to do great, judging how he's done it at Real Sociedad and United. I just don't think he's going to do a great job there. Some are kind of in the same situation as Hull because they've both just lost their managers and they've not actually been sacked or anything. They've just they've just left the club. Obviously, Sam Allardyce going to manage England and Steve Bruce left because of the problems with the owner. I don't think Sunderland will be able to get out the relegation battle this time. I just don't I just don't think they have it now with the with the new manager. Number 17, I've got Bournemouth. I don't think they're going to do as well as they did last season, but I think they will stay up because anyhow, I think he's a really good manager. Could potentially become the England manager in the next few years. Maybe, maybe just get a bigger job than Bournemouth in the next uh, year or so. But I do think Bournemouth will be able to just stay up. They do have just about enough quality. I think with Callum Wilson up top, hopefully he can start scoring a few more goals after he's, after he's just come back from injury. Obviously, they have just brought in Jordan now. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that, but I think Bournemouth will just about stay up. And they think they may, may sign a few more players just before the window ends. Number 16, I've got Watford. I don't think they're going to do great this season, Watford. Obviously, they had, they had a great start to the season last year, and it just went downhill after after Christmas, really. So, I don't think they're going to be able to do great this season. They're going to be in another like, relegation battle, I think, this season. With, I think the goals from Adini and the Gallo will be able to keep them up just. I think Watford may need to just buy like another midfielder and another centre-back. At number 15, I've got West Brom. Now West Brom are just a team that always seems to survive, they don't really seem to do much, just seem to get them uh, mid-table finishes. I think they'll just do another one this season, and I do think they'll, they'll stay up just because they like to grind out results. They're, they're obviously about to lose Berahina, I think they will do this window, but I think they do just have enough quality, I guess, just to stay up. West Brom do like to play like four centre-backs across the back line, which is interesting, but it seems to work for them because they're very good defensively. Number 14, I've got Middlesbrough. Obviously, I've already said Hull and Burnley are going to get relegated. They're the, they're the other two promoted teams. I think Middlesbrough will stay up just because they've signed Negredo, who's a, a Premier League winner, and they've signed Victor Valdez, who was the Barcelona first team keeper just quite well, just a few years ago. I reckon Negredo will score a few goals at Middlesbrough with Jordan Rhodes up top as well, so they, they have got goals in them. But I think Middlesbrough will survive comfortably. Number 13, I've got Swansea. I think Swansea will get a mid-table finish just because they've got a solid defender in Ashley Williams. They've got Sigurdsson and Ayu. If they do hold on to Ayu, because obviously they did do a transfer rumour video, and well, if, if he does end up staying, then Swansea should really survive comfortably. At number 12, we've got Crystal Palace. I don't think Crystal Palace could finish lower if they don't buy a striker, but I'm assuming they, they will bring in a striker this chance to win it, so I'm going to predict them in 12th. They're a very decent midfield with the likes of Zahar, Kabai. And they've just brought in Andrews Townsend with Balassi as well, so they have got a very solid midfield. So I think Crystal Palace will have a similar season to last season. At number 11, I've got Southampton. Now, I've put Southampton down a few places just because they've lost the manager, Ronald Koeman, who's done a great job there. 
and they've, they've lost uh, Mane as well, so they have lost a few players with Pella as well, so they've lost some of the better players and it's a shame really because I, I do like Southampton but they just seem to sell all the good players. But every season people seem to predict Southampton quite low and they end up finishing in, like quite high up in the end, so they might, they, might have another, they might have a similar season to last season. At number 10, we've got Stoke. I think Stoke have finished in 10th the last uh, two, two seasons now, so I'm, I'm going to make it three. I think they're going to have another decent season with Shaqiri or Nautovic, and they've got a solid defence as well with Shawcross and a great keeper in Jack Butland. So Stoke are just a very solid team all around, and I've got them in 10th again. In 9th, I've got Everton. Now, I think Everton will improve on last season, because obviously they were de very disappointed. I think that's the last two years now they've finished in the bottom half of the league, and they have got a much better team than that. I think even if they do let go of John Stones, they will still have a decent season, depending on if they sign a replacement for him. Obviously, Ronald Koeman left Southampton to join Everton, so I think Ronald, well, I think Ronald Koeman's a great manager, so I think he's going to do good at Everton. I'm pretty sure Chelsea did put in a bid for Lukaku as well, but Everton, I'm pretty sure, rejected it. I think they want like 70 mil from him or something, so uh, if they do keep hold of Lukaku, then I think they will have a good season. In eighth, I've got West Ham. I really do want, like the West Ham team because they've got Payet as well, and in the midfield they've got they've got a they've just got a really solid midfield and a good defence. And I do just think they need one more striker. If they can buy a decent striker, then maybe they can finish higher than eighth. In number seven, I've got Leicester. Now Leicester could just surprise me again, but I really don't think they can anymore just because Kante's left them. He's been like their main player in midfield. He's, he just needs to chase the ball. And the time Mendy is a replacement, I don't think he's quite going to be as good as Kante, though. Obviously, Leicester have got Champions League football as well, so it's going to be really difficult for them because they did have, like, they never really changed the start in 11, and they might have to change it more now they've got a lot more fixtures. Even with Mahrez and Vardy, I don't think they've got enough to even get into Champions League at the moment, but there's a good chance of them proving me wrong. At number six, I've got Liverpool. Now, this is, this is really, really difficult to predict. These It's kind of the top half. It's very, very difficult to predict just because... Anyone could win the league at the moment, like how, how it was last year and with all the top managers this season, I'm predicting Liverpool to finish sixth and then they got like Klopp as manager. Personally, I don't think Liverpool have made the greatest signings, like Mane for 34 mil, I think he could maybe do well, but for 34 mil it just, it just seems like a lot of money. If they can keep Sturridge fit, I reckon they will do very well, just because Sturridge just got a lot of goals for Liverpool. Maybe they've sorted out the defensive problems with signing Matip as well, they've got rid of Skirtle who, it just seems like he wasn't, he wasn't great towards the end of his Liverpool career. In number five, I've got Tottenham. Now Tottenham could easily finish high, but I just don't think I just don't think they were in my opinion. We saw at the end of the last season they did lose a few games. Obviously they did get thrashed by Newcastle as well. The main reason why I put Tottenham in fifth is just because there's so many other good teams at the moment. Like lots of the big teams are signing good players, so I just don't think Tottenham can get Champions League this season. In fourth, I've got Arsenal. Now for Arsenal in fourth, I'm just because I'm just assuming that they will sign either a centre back or a striker. I don't think they're going to sign both, both, but if they do, then they maybe could even get first. But uh, at the moment, I'm putting them fourth just because they need a centre back and they need a striker, and it, they just always seem to get fourth, don't they, Arsenal? If Arsenal do buy a decent striker, then they should have a very good season just because Urs will get so many assists, and if he had a great striker playing in front of him, then he'd get so many more. Number three, I've got Chelsea. From what I've seen at Conte at the Euros, I think he's a, I think he's a very good manager. Just he, he's, it seems a very well organised. So I think Chelsea will be very good. I think they do need still need one more centre back if they want to push for the title. But I do think they have got a very good team. I think Hazard will hit top form again, just like he did at the Euros and at the end of last season. Also, if Diego Costa starts scoring, then Chelsea could get a lot of goals this season. And number two, I've got Manchester United. I don't think United will win the league just because they, they didn't have a great year last year. And I don't think they can make like such a big leap to the title. So I think they, they'll come close, but I don't think they'll be able to win it. I think they have made very good transfers of Mkhitaryan, Ibrahimovic. I'm not sure on Bailey yet. Maybe he could be. Maybe he could do well. Obviously, he is still young, so he could do very well in the future. I think they've done the right thing picking Mourinho as manager, just because he can get them up to where they want to be in the short term. And like he can do that in probably one or two years and get United back into a title-winning club. So obviously, at number one, I've got Man City. Now, City have made the greatest sign in bringing in Guardiola. He's obviously the greatest manager in the world, and he's surely going to do well at City. I still think City need to buy a new defender, but obviously they're after John Stones. If they do get him, then I don't really know if that's enough because John Stones he hasn't been great last season. Maybe Pep could get him back into top form. But if they do keep Aguero and company fit, then they surely must win the league. So remember, guys, these are just my opinions. So I'm probably going to get this completely wrong. So uh, make sure you comment down below your predictions if you want, and uh, yeah, comment down below if you want to see uh, more predictions videos for like the cups and uh, European leagues. So let me know in the comments. I'm hoping I will have the. Uh, Premier League table on the screen now if, I've, if I'm a uh, okay editor I guess I'll try and get that onto the screen if not then I may look like an absolute idiot so this is about it for the video guys so make sure you drop a like comment down below and subscribe if you're new around here so this is about the end of the video thanks, thanks, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video